So my salutation to you. Today I thought I should uh, clarify further and make this uh, understanding very clear. Before I proceed further, uh, I request you to subscribe to my channel if you have not already done so. I also would request you to listen to the talk till the end because <clears throat> you know initially we know sort of introduction then of course we proceed and finally give the deeper conclusions. Now today what I want to talk to about is to clearly make you understand that there is only one God. Though all religions teach that there is only one God, they are unwilling to accept that it is the same God. <laughs> you understand this? It is the same God. See, every spiritual master who spoke about God, when in search of God, saw God and then came back and telling you what God is. But then what goes wrong is these uh, disciples will say that God, my Guru talked about is the only God. So they, this, the best thing is to really understand it like this. You know, the blind man and the elephant story in India is trying to explain this one. Same elephant. Four blind men went. First one touched the tail said the elephant is like a rope. Second one touched the leg and said the elephant is like a pillar. Third one touched the tusk and he says it is like a big uh, snake. So depending on how they looked at uh, how, which part of the ground they saw, they have different concept of uh, the elephant. Whereas if you can give that person the blessing called the sight, he will immediately know it is the same single God. So what is most important is to get this realization. If I uh, ridicule a God of different religion, you are actually ridiculing your own God. Because there are no two Gods. In fact, uh, the best uh, idea is to know that God is uh, omnipresent. If God is omnipresent, how can there be two God? <laughs> You understand the problem, no? By Pauli's exclusion principle, same place cannot be occup occupied by two different particles. Only one particle can occupy a given uh, point. Similarly, if God is omnipresent, there can only be one God. There cannot be two God. Even if you say all this, you know, still they will say, my God is the only God. <laughs> it is like two small children, you know, fighting, you know, holding on to the father, they will say, this is my father. Other boy will say this is my father. Both of them are right. It is not that. <laughs> so similarly, there is only one God, there is the same God, and uh, that we have to accept. You don't see accept that. The problems are solved. Not only problems are solved, you will get to know the truth. You will get to know the truth that there is only one God. And this uh, understanding is tremendously important. Because, you know, you should not get unnecessarily mixed of saying other God, this God, that God and so on. Only one God. So if I call him by the name, uh, any name, I have uh, finally the praying to the same God. Of course, in, uh, oh, <coughs> our Indian uh, thing says, um, to whoever God you pray, finally it goes to Keshava. Huh? Uh, it says, um, Agashat Padam Toyam, Sagaram Pradi Gachadi, Sarva Deva Namaskaram, Keshavam Pradi Gachadi. So, to whomever, with, with whatever name we may call and pray, it finally goes to that only single God. And only single God only has to take care of uh, everything. So, please uh, accept this statement that there is only one God. And if you look at the property of the one God described in different religion, you will find they are the same qualities. So, obviously, it has to be the same God. In fact, in mathematics, you know, we want to prove that a problem has only one solution. So, what do we do? We assume that there is a different solution. And then we work with it and finally end up that the same second solution we assumed is the same as the first solution we already got. So, then we prove that there is only one solution. Similarly, God also, if you look at the properties of God, 
you finally end up knowing that it is the same God. So thank you.